In this video, I'm going to be talking about the differences between ideal and non-ideal op amps. In the case of an ideal op amp, we have two primary assumptions. The first is that V plus and V minus are the same potential. And the second is that no current is going into the negative or positive inputs of my op amp. Now, in the case of a non-ideal op amp, it's very similar with a current, no currents going into the negative or positive. However, instead of saying that the positive and negative inputs are the same, we instead say the output voltage is equal to the gain of the op amp, A, typically a very large number, multiplied by the difference between these two nodes. So to begin comparing these two circuits, let's analyze first the ideal op amp, and then we'll move on to the non-ideal op amp. Starting off, I'm going to label my component currents and we have a current going through these two components. No current goes into my op amp, so the current continues around. This is going to be I1. Now we have to label our node voltages. We have a one volt source reference to ground, so I can call this node one volt. We can see that the positive input of my op amp is connected to ground, and because this is an ideal op amp, we know the positive and the negative are going to have the same potential. So that means I can call this zero volts here. And for my output, I can make up a name. We'll call this VO. So now that I labeled my circuit, I can move on to writing the equations for my components. And starting off with our 1K resistor, we have I1 is equal to 1 minus 0 divided by 1K. And we also know that I1 is equal to 0 minus VO divided by 2K. And those are the two Ohm's law equations that I have to write. Now, we wrote the equation for our voltage source on the circuit by labeling this node 1 volt, so that means we're done, and we can go ahead and solve for VO. So equating these two together, we get 1 over 1K is equal to minus VO divided by 2K, and this gives us an output voltage of VO is equal to negative 2 volts, and that's the case of the ideal op amp. Now let's go ahead and do the same for our non-ideal op amp. So let's first define our component currents. We have current coming in. Again, no current goes into our op amp, so the current wraps around. This is going to be our I1. I can still label this node 1 volt. My positive is connected to ground, but I can't label the negative input 0. I have to call this a different voltage. So let's call this V1. And we can call the output VO again. So now that I've labeled my circuit, I can go ahead and write the equations for my components. Starting off with our 1K resistor, we have I1 is equal to 1 minus V1 divided by 1K. Moving on to the 2K, we have I1 is equal to V1 minus VO divided by 2K. And we have one more equation to write. Unlike the last case where we assumed the positive and negative inputs were the same, we actually have to use the equation for the op amp to relate those two now. So that equation we can write as VO is equal to A times the difference between those two nodes. So for our V plus node, we see that's connected to ground. So I'm going to say 0 minus the V minus node. Now that's connected to my V1 node. So we'll say V1. And these are the three equations that I need to solve my circuit. So what I'm going to do now is equate my two I1 equations together so I can solve for V1 in terms of VO. So we have 1 minus V1 divided by 1K is equal to V1 minus VO divided by 2K. And this comes out to V1 is equal to 2 plus VO divided by 3. And now that I have a definition of V1, I can plug that in to this equation up here. So plugging that in, we get VO is equal to negative A times 2 plus VO divided by 3. And we can clean this up a little bit, and we get VO multiplied by 1 plus A over 3 is equal to negative 2 divided by 3 multiplied by A. So now dividing by 1 plus A over 3, we get VO is equal to negative 2 divided by 3 multiplied by A divided by 1 plus A divided by 3. So if we assume A is incredibly large, we know A is typically a large value for op amps, but let's say A goes to infinity. So if A goes to infinity, then this term gets much bigger than this term. So this dominates the effect. So at the limit, 
what ends up happening is the one becomes irrelevant in the denominator. And this can simplify by the a's canceling and the threes canceling, and we get a value that vo is equal to negative two. And that's what you should expect, is that at the ideal, when a goes to infinity, we actually get the same output as our ideal op amp. So now let's say that that assumption is not true. So now let's see what happens if a is not infinity, but say a is equal to 1000. Say our op amp doesn't have a very large gain. If we were to plug in a is equal to 1000 into these two a's here and evaluate this, vo is then equal to negative 1.994. So pretty close, but not exactly two. And this is how you evaluate a non-ideal op amp. Now, there are more op amp models that are more complicated than this. You don't always assume that i n is zero. Sometimes it's not. But this is typically the non-ideal op amp model used in these kinds of problems. Normally, they'll give you a value of a, and then you have to solve the circuit as usual. Uh, my recommendation is to do circuit analysis as normal, but just add this equation at the very end where you say that VO is equal to A times the difference between those two nodes, and be sure to not label these the same.